Okay, so this uh, is going to be another attempt at a 2D camera thing. Um, I did a brief 2D camera tutorial over the weekend, and uh, it came out apparently when it got to YouTube all black. So anyways, I'm just going to record it over again. And I also noticed that I already did a 2D video tutorial, so I'll link that in the comments, which um, will give you uh, an idea of how to move the cameras. And this tutorial is just going to be the difference between uh, how to get parallax sc scrolling or how to not have parallax scrolling. And that's that's what this whole idea is. So I'm going to build a little bit of a scene here um, using glitch assets. And again, I'm just I'm not really making this look very good, so I don't really care. Um, I'm going to stretch this out, and um, I'm going to make a few copies of this and bring it out. Um, just gonna put this so that we have something to walk on. That's all. And we're just going to cruise all the way to the right. And actually, I made too many of these. Get rid of those. Um, our star character will be this guy. That's going to be our character. And um, we're going to have some, I don't know. These things will be clouds. Use your imagination. <laughs> you can use whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but we will have these things up there. Do these things just kind of floating around in the sky. A couple more, and you'll get the idea. So this isn't really going to be too terrible of a, not going to be a whole lot of coding, um, but we'll get this thing going. All right, so maybe I'll move this thing down. There we go. Um, we're going to add a quick script to our little star guy, which is going to be our character controller. And all we're going to do is look for the right arrow. And if the right arrow is pressed, we're going to move to the right. So there's more tutorials on how to move characters and stuff like that. This isn't about how to move characters. It is about how to do the parallax scrolling. So our character controller in this one is going to be very simple. So I'll create a C-sharp script. We'll call it player controller. We will stick it on our little star. So I selected the star, we'll drag this over, and let's see, my kind of making a small adjustment here, there we go, get everything on the screen, I don't think you missed anything yet. Okay, uh, we'll open this up, and we will write our little script, and this script, um, is going to be really, really simple. So I will make a variable here, float x speed equal float. This will be how fast our character moves. Um, we're not going to change it because I think this is going to work. And so in our input, we're just going to check and see if the right arrow is down. If it is, we're going to move our character. So if input dot get key, key code dot right arrow. So this means if the right arrow is being held down, then we will s update our position. So vector to position equals transform dot position. Remember, trans this is a attached to our little star guy. So when we say transform dot position, it's the actual position of the star. Position dot x plus equals speed. Move it to the right, and then we'll update our position. Transform dot position equals position. Right, and so that's all that this thing is. We'll go back, um, and when we run, we should be able to see this thing move. There we go. All right, so the camera is not following our little guy, um, and we'll need to write a little bit of a script for the camera to follow it. And like I said, there is uh, the other video that's linked below will be, um, you know, if you want the camera to kind of slide in and slide out, or have a range in the middle where the character. Um, where the camera doesn't move. So maybe like the middle third of the screen, the character could move back and forth, but the camera is stationary. Um, so those are all covered in that other video, but we'll make a, cr a really quick, uh, we'll say quick camera controller script that I'll put on my camera. And um, all this thing will do is follow the player around. And so a couple things we'll need to know, public game object, target, which is who are we following, and we'll link this up in Unity in a sec, and then our update loop, 
um, we are just going to set the position of the camera equal to the position um, of the player, but we're going to uh, leave the Z value of the camera alone. We're not going to we're not going to um, update that one at all. So we can just say transform uh, position equals new vector three. So even this those the two D game, we got to take into account vector three because the camera is like sort of back away from our plane. Um, new vector three, and we want to be the x and y position of the player, which is target dot position target dot transform dot position dot x target dot transform dot position dot y and then the third parameter it's going to just be transform dot position dot position dot z all right let's kind of break this thing up a little bit so you can see what's happening okay so our position in the update loop, remember this is called 60 times a second, is going to equal our target, which is going to be our player, um, the x position of our player, the y position of our player, and then the z position of our transform, which happens to be the camera. So we're not going to update the z, we're just updating x and y. All right, that works. Well, maybe. Let's see. So we have our camera controller uh, attached to our main camera. Now we have this target business over here, and that's who we're going to follow. And we're going to follow um, our character, which is this thing over here. So I'll just drag it from the left and bring it over there. Remember, this thing here is our, um, it's our actual little star thing. And so that's what I'm going to drag into um, our target. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to switch this. I hate that this blue color drives me nuts. Just give it like a little bit of that. Um, and now let's run and see what happens. Hopefully the camera is going to follow us. And it does. Um, we've centered the camera right on the center of our little star and so um, by doing that we've sort of shifted down the like here the, the character is down at the bottom um, you know like me in the bottom third or something like that so we can adjust that if we want to like for example I can say plus 2 F inside of here and this is saying take the target and then add 2 to it I think it's add 2 it might be subtract 2 we'll find out that looks better so now we moved our character down. So we're always adjusting by moving down. And notice the ground is moving at the same speed of all of our fancy clouds up in the sky. right? So everything is moving at the exact same rate. Um, and that's fine if that's what you're going for. So, But we can do something else. We can do something called parallax scrolling, which is going to give us the uh, effect of depth. And, um, and that's really not that hard to do. So you know, there's lots of things that we can continue doing on with our character controller and the way we're moving our cameras and all that sort of stuff. But the point of this one is, Let's see how we can get some uh, depth in here. And if you look at like the difference between, uh, I think like Super Mario Bros, uh, the first one didn't have any parallax scrolling, and then um, definitely by uh, the SNES we had it. And I, I also think it was on Mario 3 too. I can't remember off the top of my head, but if you just look at the difference between uh, Super Mario Bros 1 and, and Super Mario World, you can definitely see the difference in what parallax is versus what it's not. Um, but let's let's get that going. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to change um, the way our camera works. So um, with our main camera selected, we come over here and there's project projection. And right now it's orthographic. And that's going to keep everything at the same um, layer, which is what we have right now. Um, but I'm going to change that to perspective. And, um, and let's see what happens. So by just that, making that one change, um, it really looks like um, nothing changed, which it didn't. And the reason is is because all of our objects in our scene are all at the same Z value. So Z becomes important, and you can see that on our, if you click right up here, um, this is our, our 2D, you know, our 3D view of our of our 2D world, and you can see that everything is in the same plane, and so that's why it, it looks like that. Um, I'm going to run the game again, and this time I'm going to grab, let's see, is this the one that I want? I want this one. Okay. So, uh, actually, I want the other one. Go back to our scene. I want to mess around with this one. And what I can do is, so I've got this one selected right here. I can start to mess around with the Z, the Z value of it. So I'm going to send it kind of out back a little bit. And then now when I run, see how this thing is, it's further back in the distance. So it's moving slower than the rest of these things that are up front. All right, so if we take all of our mountain caps and move it back, you know, negative five. I'm just kind of guessing. 
five. And then we run. Did I just move those forward? Yeah, I just moved them forward. <laughs> Look how fast they're going now. Now they're they're closer. Um, and as we go through here, you'll see that the bigger ones are moving kind of in front of these other things. And if we want them to go backwards, I will, you know, send them to the back. These should be just a five further away from the camera. All right. So now as we're playing, see these cloud, these clouds, I mean, they're icebergs, but they're clouds. They're coming up in front of everything else. These are off in the back. So, you, I mean, you can build this scene out and have some nice mountains and stuff and then have these clouds moving at a different rate. And, um, and that gives you uh, a really, really cool look. So that's, that's the idea. I mean, once you, once you, and then like, if you look at your scene here, so now we have, you can see how these things are, the camera's back here. And now these are further away than these guys. So they've actually been pushed back. Um, and all we really did is um, we changed our projection from perspective to orthographic. Now, if we go back, uh, or we change it from orthographic to perspective, if we go back to orthographic, then everything's okay. Um, even though they're at different Z values, still, I didn't change where they are. They look like this. And that's just because of how the camera is working. Um, but in order to get that parallax scrolling, two things you want to do switch your projection to perspective, uh, and then put your. Uh, different items at uh, different Z values um, up here, and then you'll get that nice scrolling effect. So that's all I wanted to do in this one. Remember, there is another video I'll link below that shows you how to slide the camera back and forth. And you can do the sliding and the parallax scrolling or the perspective view, however you want to call it, um, kind of independently of each other. So uh, you can set your camera up this way and then use the techniques of moving the camera that are found in the other video.